Good evening, everyone. I'm Kara Carmack, the Assistant Director of Exhibitions and Public Programs at the New York Studio School. And I'm honored to welcome you to our Spring 2024 Evening Lecture Series. We're delighted to host tonight's Artist Talk by Paulina Barskaya. We'll reserve time at the end for a Q&A with the audience. So please submit your questions by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen at any time throughout the conversation, and we'll save time to discuss them toward the end of tonight's program. The New York Studio School is grateful to the following funders for their support of the 2023-24 Evening Lecture Series, the National Endowment for the Arts, the New York State Council on the Arts, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, the Robert Lehman Foundation, the Samuel H. Kress Foundation, and many generous individual contributors. Please visit our website to learn more or to make a donation to help keep programs like our evening lecture series free. Now I'm delighted to introduce our guest this evening. Polina Barskaya received an MFA from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn and a BA from Hunter College in New York. Her honors include an artist fellowship in painting from New York Foundation of the Arts in 2021 and an Elizabeth Greenshields Foundation grant in 2023 2022 and 2020. Recent exhibitions include those at Tamar Grenet Projects in London, Altel Softland Fine Arts in Amsterdam, DC Moore Gallery in New York, Marian Boski Gallery in New York, and Monero Gallery in New York. Her work has been featured in Art Forum, Artnet, The Brooklyn Rail, New York Magazine, which included her in the best New York art shows of 2021, and hyperallergic, among others. The artist lives and works in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, and Chita della Pieve in Italy. Varaskaya is represented by Monero Gallery in New York. Thank you, Paulina, for being with us here tonight, and I'll now turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to start. First of all, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, Okay, so this is the first painting I'm going to start with. And this is um, a large, very large, like life-size watercolor painting from graduate, from undergrad, no, sorry, from graduate school, from Pratt. And um, this was maybe one of the first paintings that really felt like I was becoming a real painter like it felt like a very in control moment that happened um and it was like a new feeling I guess I always felt like I wanted to be an artist and I was always painting but um something happened here that uh, was exciting for me and uh, at this point I was already making watercolors for probably um five years basically only working in watercolor and um, I kept doing that all through my time at Pratt, um, usually working very large scale, uh, working from family photographs. Um, so it was all images that already existed. Um, usually they were, you know, photos I would find at my family's house or my grandparents' house. So the process of um, finding what I would paint was a big part of the work. I would like sift through the images, you know, the same ones over and over and feel out what I wanted to um, make that day. Um, and it, was, it wasn't it was always so obvious. It was like a feeling that I would have to get. Um, and then in these, I wouldn't paint the background. These were like huge, like maybe six feet um, tall. And, um, which was really fun to do in watercolor actually. And like, I don't think that was, that's like the typical way people paint with watercolors. Um, and some other ones I would work on, I would buy those like giant watercolor rolls and like just cut out or rip big pieces out that I would work on, um, all still from family photos. The next images are of my thesis show, which I decided to go very, very, very big. Um, and I put together um, parts of many different photos, also from my family and at different time periods. And 
made these like it was each one took up a whole wall of the of the room um and after that I never really wanted to do that again um it felt like I was kind of getting a little bored constantly making watercolors it was like a very um long process but maybe because I was working so big um I kind of stopped enjoying it and then right when school ended um obviously the usual feelings of like what's going to happen now came on and they were very scary feelings and um so I started working really small and um I always actually want to mention that I always work even when I was at Pratt I would usually make my work at home like I tried working in the studio and I didn't really enjoy that as much as being in my house and being able to stop and take breaks and eat and you know feel at home and then come back to work or you know work at one in the morning which I really like to do I always like to work late um and then when I finished school my studio setup was um in my kitchen I moved out of my parents house at that same time or a little bit after I finished grad school and um my studio I set up in first in the kitchen so it would just be like either at the table when I was still making some watercolors and then I set up like a little space um, which for me made perfect sense it felt like very at home um, and so then I started making small acrylic paintings which was something I really wanted to start doing because I wanted to start like painting you know, in layers that you could see instead of like trying to always work backwards and remembering, um, you know, to keep the white of the paper, which I got so used to. And it felt like, like, you know, starting to completely do the opposite, um, which felt really fun. And I thought my paintings would um, get thicker, but they never actually did. And I think I still kind of work like as if I'm painting with watercolors but I get to like layer so many things you know um over time that it doesn't look exactly like a watercolor but I still think my brain thinks in watercolor um even now so these are still um I'm still using for a while my old family photos um which I always enjoyed, but that also, it felt at some point, it just felt like, you know, it got a little um, limiting. And then uh, this is a photo of me taking a picture of myself with my phone, which I actually got really late, I think. And um, the idea obviously eventually occurred to me that I could take my own photos and so then it opened up like all these possibilities um and gave me basically complete control over what I was going to paint and I got to you know make the compositions that I wanted and it became like an endless open um opportunity to do whatever I wanted so um, I still kept things very much, you know, very personal. Like I was always interested in family and um, just, you know, the everyday parts of life. So I would take photos of myself at first um, in mirrors if I was using the phone and I was taking the image. I don't want to use the word selfie, so but they were self-portraits um, using my phone. Um, and then also I would ask my husband to help. Sometimes I feel like he was there, he could take the photo for me. And then I also got a tripod and a little remote. So I was able to actually like set up um, paintings that I wanted, uh, which again, was a big um, change for me. Um, and then I would, um, well, first I will show, this is a self-portrait obviously in the bath at my house. Um, but I will show, this is a show that I had at Honey Ramka, and this is a large group of paintings that are still a mix of uh, photos that I took, and then family, older family photos, and that was probably the last time 
that I used family photos in my work. And then I started taking a lot of photos in the apartment I was living in. And I would, you know, I had three or four rooms to work with. And so I started, um, you know, taking different angles and different times of the day and painting the same objects, but in different ways and seeing all the different possibilities you can get out of the same space or different ways you can paint the same object. And then, you know, I kind of thought that if I paint the same thing many, many, many times, um, you know, the object would either simplify or other things would simplify. And it, that did happen, actually. Um, not that it was a goal, but I just, I, you know, I figured things start becoming like a language, like you're like, oh, these are my books, and you just make lines for the books, but then you look back and it makes sense. So something in your brain makes it work. Um, the mysterious part of the brain makes those kind of things work. Um, and I liked, I was lucky because this apartment had really nice light. It was right on the beach. Um, so it gave like a lot of different, you know, shapes in the light and the way it would hit the body. And um, I would use different objects that uh, we're in the house and I would sometimes set it up a little more and other times it was in the moment of when I was eating breakfast for example or I mean the nudes were all set up because I actually don't walk around nude um, but other than that it was mostly um, moments that were happening um, but the nude is really fun to paint so I do enjoy doing that um and then, so these are all, I put them in order. They're not necessarily the order that they're painted in, but I wanted to put the separate rooms together just to see like how many things happen in this one room. Um, and a part that was really fun to paint, you know, you'd find like different areas to focus on, like the vacuum in the back of the plants became different shapes and it would create like a curved line that I would, paint over and over and I felt like it kept changing um then using different parts of the room you know as a blocking or like just making a giant almost black chunk of the painting um just things that made it fun to do con over and over and over again in the same place and then working in you know, this is like a painting um, that I made at night. So it had this like light from the TV feeling to it. Um, and then painting the same room during the day when the sun was very bright. And then, you know, playing with the window. And the windows started becoming really important. I really enjoy, um, they almost feel like separate paintings um, within the painting because they're, you know, completely different and they feel more natural and so like they move very differently than objects that have lines and more specific shapes um, and then my husband obviously uh, came into the paintings more um, because he was part of the day-to-day -day life at home um, and then also I would start sharing um, painters that I liked and like little you know images of the books that I had and it all felt like very personal, um, but at the same time, so much just about enjoying painting, um, like the light on the legs from the plants it was just, like, just a very fun thing to paint and um, still the same room. I would rearrange objects. I would, I mean, I would also start thinking about things I wanted to paint, like buying certain, you know, vases or certain books and certain fabrics that I wanted to use um, and the next few paintings will be of my bedroom um, and I was still taking some photos um, with my iPad or with my phone and um, sometimes I would keep it in the paintings and then later I started doing that a bit less um, so these are all different angles from the same room and then I would start thinking about um, you know objects just as shapes that I could use like the whole front of this painting is just the fabric from the bed 
Um, and then the red in the corner felt really good. More paintings from the same room. And I would use the mirror inside the painting a lot. Um, and it felt like almost like a little theater. Um, and then I have some paintings from when I was pregnant in the same room. Um, and sometimes, I mean, they, each painting kind of, like I don't plan how I'm going to paint it. And like, it just kind of like, um, the goal is just to kind of paint it well. And then they just comes out, you know, they don't, I don't think they all look like they're painted with the same ideas in mind. Sometimes I tell myself to simplify and then other times it's just to like paint as fast as I want. And um, sometimes I end up focusing a lot on certain details and then uh, I just kind of want to see where it will go if I don't um, try to do anything too intentional. Um, and I think with the kind of work I'm making, that's that's not that hard because um, I know that I will be painting similar things each time, but I don't have any rules about how that should look ahead of time. It's based more on like the enjoyment of it. Um, more paintings in the room. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the light the red, <laughs> um, different angles. I like putting books in the work as well. And then I put in some paintings that I like looking at mixed in that made me think of some of these. Um, they're not necessarily, um, you know, something I looked at right before making a painting, but something like this Bernard with the gesture. I think about that a lot when I go to museums, um, something I notice that I like that stands out to me a lot of times like the sh the positioning of a figure and then I'll want to mimic some part of that like the slanted head for example or you know the body obviously coming out from the corner just um, and then the fabrics I love how like um, a large chunk of a painting can just be the shape and pattern of some object like um, I love painting bed sheets for that reason as well more bedroom paintings um and it, it, you know it would make a lot of work from the same places but it actually never really became boring because each time um you just it was like almost not like a game but a, or a challenge or something I don't know but you know working on like making the floor look like a floor but every time kind of in a different way um Okay, and this is um one when I already had my baby in the same bed. And then I also started sometimes putting in paintings that I like that weren't there and like adding things and um that weren't in the painting just for the sake of the right color or um let's see. Okay. And now these are some kitchen paintings. It's basically the same idea. Um just kept making um, tons of paintings in this room in different light, playing with the window. Um, and in a way, they ended up kind of feeling like they're telling stories, but not, you know, stories I'm really telling. But once you have like more than one character, I think you can't help but um, seeing some kind of narrative in them. Um, a lot of things around food and eating. Um, but this room also had like a very special feeling and it had a, a lot of really good light. So I was able to keep making tons of paintings here without it feeling boring. Okay. And then after a while, um, I started making more work from travel because one, I wanted to have um, some fresh things to paint. And also because I was doing a lot of traveling, I just wasn't taking photos or making work from it. And then I started doing a lot of that. So just be like different rooms um, in a lot of different places, which I'll show you. Um, basically everything since then has been in places that were not officially my home. 
Um, this is a Matisse painting I put in. I don't know if I put this in the exact right place that I wanted to, but I'll get back to the paintings that I saw this painting and I always wanted to make like a perfect, you know, leisure park outdoor cafe kind of painting so I would do that a lot I'll, I'll get to it soon um I think I meant to put that later but it's fine um so these are watercolors that I would first do when I was traveling so like on shorter trips to keep working I would make a lot of uh, small watercolors so I would try to work every night at least a little bit and then sometimes those watercolors would turn into paintings as well or the images, I would use the same image for a painting. So one of the ones on the bottom here came a painting as well. Um, and then I started playing more with um, sleep and I guess like just all these like leisurely moments, quiet moments, intimate moments just kept coming into my work. Um, partially because I think I do spend a lot of time at home um, and then it just becomes a really important part of my life and I'm just that's what I like to paint things that feel very familiar to me um, more travel paintings um, this is from Venice so you know you end up in some places where you get all these patterns and lights that you can work with and it changes everything and Greece, New York, um, again, more beds and sheets. And I started really liking working with gray and doing a lot of like gray feeling moody walls. This was from a place that felt like a like an Andrew Wyeth painting. So just I made a few paintings that from this like little house and just it, it was great. Um, but the, then you just realize how much the space you're in can like change everything. Um, so the feeling here, I feel like is completely different from my apartment. Um, this is a very early pregnancy painting actually of me. Um, and then a lot of these were from when I was pregnant. So I started painting that obviously, um, like it wasn't even a choice, but but it was very fun to paint pregnancy. Um, there's like the body changing and um, all that. This was from France. Um, this is a Vermeer that, I mean, I look at Vermeer a lot. The windows, the like quiet, um, the compositions, um, also the like theatrical feeling, you know, of having the curtains in front. Um, these are more paintings of me, <laughs> windows, lots of windows and the windows, I feel like keep changing, um, the way that I paint them, how important they are. Um, this is a Hammershoy. Um, I could never be this quiet and perfect, but I look at them a lot and I feel like I get a lot of ideas from this. Um, although I would never... I don't think I would paint exactly like this um, soft, but I do think they're very beautiful. I do think about them a lot. And even if not the way they look, just the that like quiet feeling. Um, some more paintings of travel and light, pregnancy. Um, a lot of upstate New York paintings, which have a very particular look as well. Um, I liked this house that this was like a Airbnb uh, because of all the pops of yellow. Um, I could not get that in my home. Uh, another pregnancy painting. Uh, this was probably one of my favorite paintings of being pregnant. Um, this was from an art residency that I did and uh, the window like played off really well with the wallpaper because it was like the trees were so bare and the whole room felt like really lush in the middle of winter and then perfect mirroring of the mirror and the window um and then I will go through some more paintings um in this one my parents were in the painting which I don't do very often uh, but it worked here um, I have not 
I'm trying sometimes to add more people to my paintings, but it doesn't always feel right. And I try to go um, with the feeling over anything else, because if it doesn't feel right to paint, I have to stop because I know it'll never be good. Um, another hammer showing. Just loved the gesture um, of the hand. And I, I ended up doing that a lot. Not necessarily always keeping that painting in mind, but I feel like once I see it, I can't unsee it. And then it just keeps happening. Um, okay, go through more paintings. So I, for a while, basically did not paint almost anything from my home. I was also started after I had a baby, um, moving around a lot more because um wanted to spend more time outside of New York after that so I spent more time in Italy a lot of art to see there a lot of um inspiration um, this is a Piero della Francesca from the Brera I think in Milan um and we have a lot of um his hometown is like an hour half away from where I'm living right now um so there's a lot of his work nearby and it's fun to like go and visit every so often because there's like a lot of reminders in his work um and one thing that I always want like I always look at is the way he painted the skin the like and he was able to like um just do it so softly and so delicately um yeah so that helps me sometimes I need that reminder um so it's more baby paintings more travel paintings um here I just had I happened to have a photo of my painting before it was done so I thought that could be interesting I don't sketch almost ever on the um panel I'll do like a, you know, a painting, like a blobby painting underneath. So I I know where everything goes and then start working off of that. But I don't like really sketching um, because then, you know, everything just feels too pre-planned for me. Um, there's one big one I'm going to show you that did have a little sketching, though. It's, it was very large and I think I was very intimidated by it. Um, this one but I don't do this very often but even that and then it completely changes once a few steps um that's a detail and then that's the final painting um some more I mean obviously a lot of these are from Europe so the scenes really change and then I started you know when traveling, looking for places that I would want to paint in a way like sets. But um, I mean, I would have done that anyway, just for the travel. But I always had the thought in the back of my mind that um, I want a place that looks a certain way so that I can paint it. Um, so and that is always very different, but I, I'm very careful choosing where I go. Um, and then a lot of paintings in the bath. Um, see, don't know what new thing. This is another hammer show. Um, I also look at his work a lot for the doors because um, they're very hard for me to paint because they can be a little too, um, you know, straight lined and perfect. So the, I'm I'm actually much better at painting things that are more um natural like nature or people and then anything that's rigid and lines that's where I have to really focus um because I don't I don't use rulers or anything like that that makes it too boring for me um so a lot of the time you'll see the lines that are supposed to be straight are obviously not um and this is an outdoor painting, which I only started doing a few years ago. It was always interiors. And then I started working outside as well, a bit uh, close to the home usually, but um, some exteriors. And this is 
a painting where I st I do a lot of paintings from an, a, an other room and um, because I like having one, the contrast of colors and two, that whole like feeling of a theater opening up. I put it next to my painting here because of the composition, I think. Um, this is an outdoor painting. I started really liking painting nature, um, but I haven't been able to make a painting without people in it as well. So I feel like they always have to be um, together for it to be um, interesting to me. Um, here's a picture of me working in my studio after having a baby. Um, so I was, I would wear her and I would work. So, um, that was how I managed because people told me a lot about how, you know, once you have a baby, you can't make paintings for a while. And, but I figured out a way to just work while she slept. Um, and part of, you know, that was because my studio was at home. So it didn't really ruin my time of work. And I was always able, to, I mean, less time to work, obviously, for a while. But um, I feel like if you can manage doing that in your house, then it makes your life so much easier. Um, and then this was from a road trip through part of America. Um, different baby paintings. And sometimes I work from, you know, I'll have a lot of images now that I've made over the last few years, and I'll go back to older images that I want to work from. Um, but usually it feels freshest if it's something that's very recent. Um, but then I like, I'll look through them again and again and again in case there's something that like speaks to me in some way. Um, and some places like this room was really really interesting to paint. So I, I made a lot of paintings, like going back and forth from here. Um, a lot of paintings in the bath. Well, this room obviously had great patterns of the green stood out. And um, this is from the Norton Simon with a Bernard next to me. Um, more outdoor paintings. I'll go through, there's a lot of um, images. So I'll go through some. Um, I did a lot of breastfeeding paintings because I was doing a lot of that. Um, it's a place we stayed in, in Italy. Um, this is another painting that I had images of as I was working on it. So you can see should have the final painting of that somewhere, but maybe I... this is a similar painting and then there's like a detail. Um, more work. This was from a place we stayed in. Um, and it was, I mean, I end up feeling like at home in all these places. So they start feeling like these were some longer stays. So it starts feeling like home and I start doing kind of a similar thing where I take a million photos and then I, you know, make many, many paintings from the same room. Um, let's see, it's another Piero della Francesca. This one I go see actually pretty often. I mean, I've seen many times uh, Madonna del Parto. And these are the most recent paintings I've made um, in Italy, um, mostly from small trips I've taken while being here. And you'll find a lot of really uh, decorated rooms. See, there's a lot to work with. Um, and also I'm trying, you know, to do different kind of compositions constantly. You can see that here. Um, it's another in process painting. Uh, okay, some more. This is from my last show. Oh, this is the same. This was where I meant to put this. Um, and then I wanted to show this painting, I feel like was the closest I came 
um, to getting that feeling. Um, a little darker, but um, I felt like it had certain elements of that, which I always wanted to have in my painting. Um, and I started making more outdoor paintings. Um, I feel like it's, I'm gonna show the rest of the paintings and then I think people could just ask questions if they would like to do that. Um, I started recently also making more uh, paintings of my daughter, even some by herself, which has been really fun. Children are a completely different thing to paint. It's like very fun, but I like they're, they're also somehow like easy. I mean, because it's my daughter and I know her face so well, but they're like easier to paint in a way. I don't know. Or it's like more enjoyable to paint children. Um, okay. This is a recent painting of reading. And then this is a painting that's from the Met. I think this is a Vermeer from the Met. I always love this painting. Um, and again, with the gesture that I really like. And also the rooms that you can see um, behind her. I do that a lot. Um, I don't know if that came from there, but that makes me think of it. Um, this is a recent, lots more of my daughter, um, more paintings, more paintings, another picture of me painting with my baby. Um, and I think that's it for my slides. Um, it would be nice for people to ask questions because then I, I can know what you need to hear from me. Thank you, Paulina. What a wonderful overview of your practice. Thank you. Um, so again, I invite our audience to enter your questions either into the chat or um, by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and I'll be happy to um, ask them on your behalf. Um, Paulina, a question that I had was about the, um, you know, these moments are quite intimate and um, personal, but when, when you tend to paint yourself or the figure of you, mm -hmm. um, there's a really intense gaze or facial expression. And so mm -hmm. while uh, so much of the scenes seem relatively serene, I wonder if you could speak to this, this gaze and maybe, you know, it, it, it just, you know, it's sort of like a Leonora Carrington, you know, stare. Mm -hmm. um, and if you could talk a little bit about that. I mean, I don't think about it that, hard I, I think that is just the way I look you know and I'm also focused on the image that I'm taking um I don't know if I'm trying to make like a very strong persona you know but um uh, I think part of it is because the image is being taken of me and I'm so aware of it um and I like paintings where the um the model is looking right at you it feels very direct um but that's the main thing about that I mean I always I think when I'm taking a photo I usually ask uh, the people I'm photographing to look like right at me as well so I like painting that direct um it changed I mean obviously like depending on where the models are looking it changes the whole feeling of the painting so mm -hmm. great thank you we have um an online question that um starts with really wonderful work do you work on one painting at a time? And you know, how long do you typically take to work on a painting? Uh, I always work on one painting at a time. I can't um I can't even imagine moving around at, you know before I'm done. Um and it usually it depends how long. I mean it could take like like a, a week, but if something is very difficult, it could take a little longer. They're not large, they're not too large. So um, I'm a fast painter. So I feel like when I work quickly, um, it, it benefits my work, you know, um, to get things. And also because it's acrylic, so like um, before it dries, like it's just like a habit of like working very fast. So, but yes, only one painting at a time. 
And how big are they approximate? Because the watercolors you said were like six feet. And then yeah, how, no, how large are these that. paintings? Um, mm -hmm. Between, um, well, some are very small, but um, the average is like 20 by 30, 30 by 40 is, I would say, a large painting already. Mm -hmm. so, like very mm -hmm. intimate scale. Mm -hmm. um, we have another online question, um, which is, do you ever paint from life? Or is it always mediated through the camera, through the mirror, through photography? Um, it's always through the camera. Um, I just feel like a lot of things I want, I can't really get if I paint from life, especially if it's of me or of my me with my family. Um, and it's hard for me to also paint from memory. So having an image to look at, I mean, to paint solely from memory, because I feel like part of it it does come from your head not from the image you're looking at but I always need something to look at um it helps me a lot and then I don't you know necessarily paint it exactly the way it is in the photo or I change things around but the, having it there helps mm -hmm. and I, I actually think about that a lot because I would not never have been able to have painted some of these setups and angles if it was just from life um I just the, or the way at least how my brain works like I need it to be the way I'm looking at it to be able to mm -hmm. and, I, and I take a lot of photos so that I can choose the way I want it to look so I guess and, and building part, off of that yeah sorry yeah. just saying the photography part is a big part of the the painting absolutely and another question that sort of ties into that is about um perspective so um our audience member writes that the use of photo derived composition carries a rationalized perspectival space um but which you translate into painterly approximations that mm -hmm. are strong and conveying mood um and so what is your understanding of the perspectival tradition and how you're sort of using the painterly tradition meets this you know mechanical lens um i mean Again, I don't really think about it that hard. It just came so naturally and it just makes so much sense to me that I have this tool that people didn't have before. So um, you're able to do things that people just didn't do. Before. I mean, paintings looked different before, obviously. Um, and now you can make something, you know, like it, it kind of also, it's just like something that, you can control and then it controls too because the way you take photos and you know the way you can look at things now is just so different in every way I guess that um I don't know like when I painted from the old family photos even everything was so different and the way people understood taking photos was different than the way an artist I guess would take an image for a painting um so yeah mm -hmm. Um, another online question um, is, is essentially about this relationship between being a painter and being a mother. And I've noticed that, you know, increasingly there are more and more museum exhibitions and gallery exhibitions focusing on motherhood mm -hmm. very recently. I mean, there always, always have been artists discussing parenthood or painting parenthood. Um, and, and so this audience member asks, you know, if you could speak a little bit more about balancing motherhood and painting as a mother herself, but also more broadly speaking about this moment of this attention being given to bodies and babies and careers um, that we see happening right now. Okay, well, um, for me, it was not hard to balance, but I think, I, I don't know if that's can help someone else just because my work was always done in a way where I could um, do it in the comfort of my home. So having a baby actually and making work about my life just made it more interesting having a baby because there was some a new addition to my life. And it was just like a very large period where it was just so much fun to paint that. Um, and then um, I mean, I don't know, is there a lot more attention being given to, I mean, like, when I think about paintings of mothers, I think of Alice Neal, and she made so many paintings, and 
um, like way before you know anyone now and so and I think people love those paintings I so I don't know if I don't know if it's just I don't know I don't know if it's has it changed that much I don't know um to me again it was just like a very natural thing I was so excited that I was gonna have a baby and then also have these new things to paint so I didn't really think whether it would be um, a good thing or a bad thing for my work and but it turned out to actually be great so I don't know I mean what kind of advice would someone want about that Maybe very practical. I love that you gave us practical advice on how am, oh, you were yeah, able well, to hold <laughs> the yeah. baby while painting, I think is something that's just helpful for artists to see or yeah. to know or to think about. Mm -hmm. Well, they also sleep a lot. So if you, you know, get some sleep part of the day, you have actually a surprising amount of time to work if you want to work. Um, mm -hmm. So it's doable. If you have to go to a studio and your work is huge or it's impossible to work with the baby near you, then I, it, I would assume it's very challenging for at least a few years. Um, but in my case, it wasn't like that. So, mm -hmm. And I actually told myself that I wouldn't paint for the first year if like, I had to you know, just focus on being a mom. But I saw that I just I had time and my studio was in the same room where she slept. So it just was fine. Mm -hmm. so. Great. I, my um, actually biggest advice would be not just about um, children, but generally, like if you can, you know, work within your means instead of like not being able to work because of some things in your life make it too hard. You could just simplify certain things. You could always make work. I know that's not going to work for everyone, but there was a point where I had no space. So my work was smaller. And then like when I had more space, the work grew and I was, it was fine, you know, working small when I had to, and then, you know, things open up. So you work bigger, so, but not everyone can do that. Uh, a practical question for you um, is about materials and, and your brushes. Do you use bristle or sable brushes? Um, both, because sometimes I use like the same. I mean, I don't think sometimes I buy like the cheapest brushes and I always buy the pointy ones um, in all different sizes. So nothing other than the, you know, like the really thin so I can get like all the details so all my brushes look the same just all different sizes and um, I have a few watercolor brushes I tried I don't feel a huge difference um, I mean sable brushes using like high quality brushes or cheaper brushes in my case I also don't take care of things very well so it doesn't really pay to buy like very fancy art supplies good paint but other than that Mm -hmm. And I get good panels made um, because I'm in Italy. Actually, I found like really good. So <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have another online question that's asking about your um, some of the artists you've mentioned, um, mm -hmm. Vermeer, um, Hammershoy. I think we also saw some Mirandi, you know, floating oh, up yeah. on your walls. And should have included some Randy. Well, I'm not good <laughs> at slideshow. <laughs> um, of only your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yes. Right. Um, and so they're asking if you could um, speak a little bit more to these artists who've influenced you, and also if there okay. are contemporary painters that you're that you're looking at and inspired by. Um. I don't know if there's, I, I look at a lot of contemporary painters. I don't think I'm inspired by contemporary painters in the same way. Um, but the old, like the artists I mentioned, I mean, Mirandi actually was huge for me um, because he obviously like was constantly painting almost the same things. And, and it was like, it's like almost like comforting to see somebody doing that because it makes it feel more okay to, um, be able to do something that I feel like a lot of people would think might be boring um but 
seeing him do that and then seeing how being able to stick to doing that changed his work over time and then like you know giving yourself that permission to just keep going and then seeing where that takes you and I've definitely seen like being able to like constantly do similar things and then seeing how like there's are little changes but they're constantly happening and so that's a big big one for me um with some artists that I really like it's just it really is like you just come in and you know you're gonna get some ideas like I said like gestures or patterns or um you know you'll see like a some you know painting where someone is laying a certain way and it's like oh I have to do a good sleep painting now and then like you just like play off of that um I also look at a lot of films so I feel like they must also influence my work as well um, I mean I love stories about people so like I, I love watching people doing things um simple things like I don't like um you know like I like movies about family and I don't like when a lot of things happen <laughs> just like mm -hmm. yeah so um and related to that sorry yeah because right. you're um you're sort of repainting the same figures a lot of times um do you and, and then they sort of appear in these different tableau do they become separate from the, the people that you're painting in real life and become sort of characters that get put into these different spaces or is it more complicated or more simplified than that? Um, I think it's both. I mean, there's definitely an element of using myself and my family kind of as characters, but because it's us, it's also personal. And I mean, I don't really create things that aren't happening maybe not in the moment but I, I usually the ideas I get for paintings are a combination of things that I'm seeing happening and then you know combined with certain things I've seen in paintings in the past that I you know want to also seep into my work um, but like I do feel like even paintings of me I don't look like the same person in all of them it's just kind of like I use it so that I can keep working and I feel like for me to enjoy doing it it has to be personal somehow mm -hmm. so great do we have any final questions for Paulina great well thank you so much for spending your very late evening there in Italy thank with you. us tonight <laughs> this was a real joy um thank really you so appreciate much talking about your work with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining. Have a great night.